Hello, everyone. Hello. Greg Ross, Rat Trapping Tips. And it's the 15th of February, 2022. So today, we're just going to go over this again. Uh, because uh, it's very important. If you're really serious about catching the rats and you want to catch every rat, every time, uh, it pays to... When you get a new Victor trap, it pays to tweak it up with some pretty serious adjustments. And that uh, ups your chances of catching the rats tremendously. It brings your catch rate up from maybe 40%. Brings it right up to almost 100%. So that's a huge difference. Instead of catching 3 or 4 rats out of 10, you're now going to catch 10 out of 10. But you've got to adjust these traps. Now this is a plastic plate. It's supposed to be a lot better than the, than the metal plates because it's got a bigger area and therefore more leverage. Uh, anyways, even these are still uh, not perfect and you can get them nearly or perfectly perfect by these adjustments which I'm going to show you. So first of all, I use peanut butter always. That is rats favorite food one of their very favorite foods is peanut butter you put the peanut butter on the bait plate but uh, typically the rat will come along and very delicately lick all the peanut butter off so what I do is I cut this is an old towel bath towel cut about two inches about a two inch square piece of some absorbent cloth it doesn't need to be bath towel it can just be any cotton and cram it in under there under the tab on the on the bait plate this makes a huge difference this this alone is going to bring your catch rate up by about 30 percent so cram it in under there like that so it's jammed in there so that means when you put your peanut butter on you lather the peanut butter and you work it into the cloth so it's saturated totally saturated with peanut butter and you put the peanut butter around there the bait plate and then the little bait cup there then the rat comes along he's going to pull at the cloth to eat it he'll he will actually eat the cloth and every so often you have to replace this because the rats will will eat it right down but as they're pulling they're setting off the trap so now the other thing i do when i get one of these traps you can see how the staple is raised up so the the kill bar is actually not touching the wood around this side too and these springs are fairly close together here and um, so what tends to happen in time is often not always but sometimes in time these strings springs are very powerful they will lift that staple right up and it'll fall out and your trap will fall apart so what I do right from the get-go to prevent that is I hammer that staple I hammer the staple right down through to the other side and then bend it over okay like that oh the other thing I do to really because this really helps hold the trap together is I get one of these little fencing staples you can buy it at the hardware store and I put it right there in the center of the bar like that and then hammer it home and you need you often need some kind of a punch to do that so I just use this bolt and make sure you get that staple in as far as you can right so it's forcing that bar right down right down onto the wood and that makes it a lot easier to hammer and hammer in those side staples and then the end here you just hook with your pliers just all you can do is just hook that and bend it over like that you see <laughs> okay so you've bent that staple over that will never pull out now then you turn around you do the other side the other side staple is not so long 
as the first one. Usually they do, they make one staple longer than the other for some reason. So what I do is I get a screwdriver blade like this on edge and I just whack it a few times, drives it right through to the other side and then you can get your pliers and just oh, hook it like that and then you bring it down so it's bent over. Okay. Now you don't have to worry about, ever have to worry about that trap coming to pieces. It's permanently, it's permanently going to hold together. Okay, the other thing I like to do, just to make sure that these springs are at maximum power and that they don't get out of position and screw up the trap, as I push the springs right to the side like that. Okay. And let's do this one. So they're right out, and they're giving the trap maximum power, and they stay in position, and then I just to keep them in position like that. I bang a staple in there, and I bang a staple in there. And so those springs now, and then I hammer the staples home. Those springs now will not drift, they will not drift out of position. Okay, and that trap actually, because we've pushed, we've pushed the bar right down onto the wood and compressed those springs even more than the factory settings, that trap now has probably at least 15% more power than before. That's a trap that will kill four rats at once. No other trap on the market will have a hope of doing that. The plastic traps are lucky to kill one big rat. I have a professional rat trapper in my area, a uh, colleague of mine, and he, is, he has killed four small rats in one of these traps. The most I've ever killed is two rats at once, but I, I regularly get two rats at once in one of these traps, sometimes two big rats. Uh, the plastic ones, you're lucky to kill one big rat in them, and uh, I've heard of several people here around my neighborhood getting three at once. I've never done it myself, but someday I hope to. Okay, so we move on. Now what we do is the rat is going to come in from here, or he's going to come in from there, or there, or there. He's going to come in to approach that bait, to engage it. So this makes it a little bit harder for him to get in there so easily get in and out because he's got to now put his neck over these nails and that means that when the trap starts to go off and he sees it coming off make sure you nail outside so the bait plate still has uh, plenty of room to work I'm going to have to bend that one back so it's got to up and down loosely, properly. So we want to cover all the approaches to this bait plate. If he comes from the front, he's got to put his, ne his neck over a nail or two. If he comes from the side, he's got to put his neck over a nail or two. And I usually use about eight to ten nails on one of these kind of traps. If he comes from the back corner, again, he's got to put his neck over one of these nails here. So, when he springs the trap and he can see the arm coming over, he's now got to pull off across these nails. It's going to be a little bit not so easy for him. It's going to drag him, catch him, slow him down, and uh, that can make all the difference. And also, when the arm does come down, it's going to impale him on one of these nails, and that really seals his fate. You cut the, just nip the tops off these nails, and uh, sharpens them enough, and gets them the right length. You don't want them too long. You want them sticking up, yeah, about half an inch to three quarters of an inch above the wood, and. Uh, Just nip them off. You don't need to file them sharp. Just nipping them is enough to give them a bit of a 
sharp edge and uh, it'll create quite a bit of drag on the rat. So, and I don't do these adjustments, I don't do any of these adjustments without doing a lot of research on them. I test them in the field for months. I'm not going to do all this extra work on traps if I don't think it's going to be worth it. So I test these traps. I've tested all my adaptations in the field for three months or so, 20 traps or so. I don't just do one or two, I do about 20 traps and uh, I test them for about three months. Okay, so we've still got a bit of a problem here. Oh yeah, okay, so that's all right. We don't want any drag on these nails, so we just have to bend these out a bit. I nailed them a bit close, but... It's coming out of there. Didn't really get it in there enough. Okay, let's put this right in there. Jam it right. Jam it up there. Okay. Right. Now, if this trap was a, had a metal bait plate, then I would fit one of these bait cups over it, which is a cat food can. I would staple it around there because that helps these ones. So you see I've got the, the cloth wad crimped into the bait plate here. I've got my four nails across. These guys are good because they only take about usually three or four nails maximum across the front. That's enough. And then you've got your bait cup here, which restricts the rat's vision of the arm coming over to kill it. And also forces its nose right in hard against the bait plate. And that's, but you can only fit these to metal bait plates. You can actually do one on these plastic plates, but it takes a lot of time and fiddling around. And I don't think the work is worth it because these are pretty good as they are. So the next stage is to, of course, you've got to fit your anchor cord. A very important uh, part of setting a rat trap properly is to anchor the trap. If you don't anchor your trap, the rat is going to drag it away. You won't know if you've caught a rat or a mouse or a raccoon. And the rat's probably going to drag it into a dark corner where it's going to rot and stink your whole house out. Uh, and you're going to lose your $4, $5 trap and all this work of setting it up and catching the rat has sort of gone to a waste. You're not going to get proper closure. Did the rat live? Did it survive? Um, you don't know what's going on and you want to know what's going on with rats. You want a conclusive results. So, you get very strong anchor cord like this which will hold a raccoon or an eagle or if something comes down to try and get the dead rat out of the trap. It's not going to be able to take your trap away. It's going to either have to, it's going to have to get the rat out of the trap or it's not going to get the rat because this trap anchored with this nylon cord uh, will hold an eagle or any small animal, raccoon, whatever, coyote. Um, so, and now I put my flagging tape on. Do, do my loop like that so I've got something to, there's usually something around you can loop it over to anchor it. Put my flagging tape on to remind me that the trap is there. And so that other people know the trap is there if you're trapping on private property. These things can really hurt you if, they, if you get one, or a dog or cat. Anyways, I never have a problem with cats. I've never, ever, ever heard of or seen a cat get into the peanut butter. Cats simply don't like peanut butter and cinnamon, which is what I put on all my traps. Dogs, on the other hand, about 50% of them will actually go for the peanut butter and cinnamon, but dogs generally, if they hit one of these, they, uh, they get whacked on the nose, they get yelp, and that's the end of it, and they won't go near one of these again after that. Usually doesn't injure them uh, seriously, it's just a fright more than anything, maybe a bruise or whatever, but um, uh, even a small dog uh, in one of these is just going to get a whack on the nose usually. And then 
they won't go near them again, which is kind of good. But it's very rare. If a well-fed dog um, usually doesn't bother with these, and I usually put my traps in areas where dogs cannot access them, or cannot access them without a lot of trouble, and peanut butter is generally not a dog favorite food. Uh, they like meat, and peanut butter is not meat. It's sort of a secondary thing. It's more, it would be more of a puppy. So that's the Victor professional trap set up uh, to kill rats, and um, that's the way you do it. Okay, bye for now.